Have you ever wondered what defines the identity of the church? The answer to this question is not as straightforward as it may seem. The identity of the church is a complex tapestry woven from centuries of tradition, belief, and practice. Some might say that the identity of the church is found in its teachings, while others might argue that it's in the community it fosters. But to truly understand the identity of the church, we need to trace its roots back to the very beginning. Consider this. The church, as we know it today, finds its origins in the New Testament, specifically on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus' death. This was the day when those who had been baptized and had received the gospel message were added to the church. It was a defining moment that shaped the church's identity and set the course for its journey through history. This journey, its origins, transformations, and the principles that guided it along the way all contribute to the true identity of the church. So, let's dive into the origins and evolution of the church to understand its true identity. The Church of Christ was established 50 days after Jesus' death, on the day of Pentecost. This was a time of profound transformation, a time when the Word of God truly began to take root in the hearts and minds of believers. As the apostles spoke, those who were moved by their words were baptized for the forgiveness of their sins and received the gospel message. It was through this act of faith and acceptance that they were added to the church, becoming part of a burgeoning spiritual community devoted to the teachings of Christ. The establishment of the church on the day of Pentecost holds immense significance. This was not merely the founding of an institution, but the birth of a spiritual movement that has endured for over 2,000 years. It was a moment that marked the transition from the teachings of Jesus to the lived faith of his followers. Now it's crucial to understand that any church established later in history is not the church of the New Testament. Why, you might ask? Simply put, the church of the New Testament was rooted in the direct teachings and experiences of those who walked alongside Jesus. Those who bore witness to his miracles, his sacrifice, and his resurrection, their experience, their understanding of Jesus' teachings shaped the very foundation of the church. Any church founded after this period would lack this direct connection to the life and teachings of Jesus. In essence, the Church of the New Testament was not just a place of worship, but a community of believers, a body united by faith in Jesus Christ. It was a spiritual home for those who had been touched by the gospel message and had chosen to live their lives in accordance with its teachings. Thus, the first step to identifying the Church is understanding its roots in the New Testament. The organization of the Church is another crucial aspect of its identity. The New Testament outlines a specific pattern for church organization, a structure that is a reflection of the divine design. At the very head of this organization, we find Christ himself. His role is not merely symbolic, but one of active leadership, guidance, and ultimate authority. Christ is the cornerstone, the anchor, the head of the church, making it a Christ-centered, not a man-centered organization. On a local level, congregations are led by a plurality of elders, not by a single pastor. These elders, chosen for their wisdom and spiritual maturity, share the responsibilities of leadership and decision-making. This model promotes unity, balance, and accountability, a stark difference from the hierarchical structures and single pastor systems found in some churches today. In these systems, power is often concentrated in the hands of one individual, and this can lead to a distortion of the church's true identity. It can create an environment where the focus shifts from Christ to a single human figure. But the New Testament teachings remind us that the church's leadership should reflect the humility, servanthood, and shared responsibility that Christ himself demonstrated. Moreover, it's crucial to remember that the church is not merely an organization, it's an organism, a living body of believers. Every member has a role to play, a gift to contribute. The New Testament teachings emphasize the importance of each member, each gift, each role in the functioning of the whole. This is not a top-down structure, but a body working together under the headship of Christ. The church consists of elders, deacons, and saints. In conclusion, the structure of the church is more than a matter of practicality. It's a matter of identity. It's a reflection of the divine design, a testament to the wisdom of God. The structure of the church reveals its identity, and any deviation from the New Testament model is a deviation from the true church. Worship procedures also play a key role in identifying the true church. It's essential to understand that worship isn't merely a routine or tradition. It's a heartfelt expression of reverence and adoration for our Creator, shaped by the teachings of the New Testament. The New Testament outlines specific patterns for worship, providing a blueprint for the Church's worship procedures. These include practices such as the Lord's Supper, prayer, singing hymns, giving, 
and the reading and teaching of the scriptures. Each of these components holds deep significance, serving to unify the congregation, foster spiritual growth, and honor God. However, it's crucial to note that any church deviating from these New Testament teachings, introducing new practices or discarding traditional ones, risks losing its true identity. Adherence to these worship procedures is not about rigidly following a set of rules, but about preserving the spiritual integrity of the church, ensuring it remains true to its origins and purpose. Thus, worship procedures are a critical part of the church's identity. So, what have we learned about the identity of the church? Well, first and foremost, the identity of the church is intrinsically linked to its establishment. The Church of Christ, as we've discussed, was formed 50 days after Jesus' death on the day of Pentecost. Those who received the gospel message and were baptized became the first members of this divine congregation. The structure of the church, too, is a key element of its identity. With Christ at the helm, the local congregations were led by a plurality of elders and also consists of deacons and saints in stark contrast to the hierarchical structures and single pastor systems we sometimes see today. This organizational pattern reflects the teachings of the New Testament and is integral to the church's identity. And finally, let's not forget the importance of worship procedures that align with the New Testament teachings. These procedures are not just rituals. They are the embodiment of the church's faith and commitment to the teachings of Christ. The identity of the church lies in its origins, its structure, and its practices, all rooted in the teachings of the New Testament. 